So trapezius, as John Saki uh, aptly calls it, is the grand central. It's a, a really nice little muscle. Um, often it will have a trigger point somewhere about here, which interestingly enough, if I remember rightly, is an acupuncture point as well called a GB20. Very, very effective um, uh, a point to, to treat in, for a lot of things. Basically, its origin is like the, the medial third of the superior nuchal line up here and the uh, external occipital protru protuberance and then coming under ligamentum nuchi, nuchi which is the ligament that attaches to the, the, um, the spinal processes. The spinous processes and the supraspinous ligaments of the seventh um, cervical and all the thoracic vertebrae. So it's basically coming down here, attaching up here. So you've got this sort of delta-shaped muscle that comes like that. Now its insertion is the lateral third of the clavicle, so over here. The medial margin of the acromion, so again in here. And the entire length of the spine of the scapula. So again, you've got this muscle that's basically coming out here, going across like that, and then down like this, and up there. Its action is basically laterally lateral rotates and elevates the scapula, and um, it also uh, retracts the scapula. So if I get you to just pull your shoulder blades back together, you can kind of see, and it's a good model because he's pretty muscular, um, you can see it really like bulging here quite nicely. Um, now if I did it, you would see well, pretty much nothing. I don't think it would move. But um, you can see it very, very nicely here, trapezius muscle. I'll just get you to re relax. Now if the scapula is fixed, it's going to laterally, laterally flex the neck um, and even extend it. So you will, if you pull your, your head back, if I'm fixing here, it can actually work and, and pull the neck back because of its, its attachments up onto the, the nuchal, nuchal line. To test it, you can, you can test it in, in various ways. Generally, one um, can get somebody sitting, abduct the arms up to about 120 degrees, so about here, and then they will just kind of push, push the arms forward, so you push your arms forward. And the whole thing with the, uh, the other way of testing it in the upper traps is a slight abduction, just drop your arm down, and, um, to, sorry, drop your arm to about 90 degrees, like that. Now shrug your shoulders. And you can see it really coming out here. And the other thing that you can do is if I re resist those areas, drop your arms down and let push your head to my side, to the side into my hand. And shr shrug your shoulder as well. And again, you'll see it. The lower traps, um, usually the patient is lying with their arms again lifted up and, um, and you try to stop them externally rotating their arms. That we, the whole point of this is, it's not going to help you with trigger points. None of the tests are. More often than not, they're, they're length or, or, or muscle strength tests. But it just gives you an idea that, okay, referral pain pattern, checklist, four factors have said this is a trigger point. I want to sometimes just review where the muscle's sitting. I know my anatomy. I'm going to palpate. But maybe that test will be useful just to, to test it. It's not going to help you find a trigger point. It, if I, again, if I get you to shrug your shoulders up, that's not going to help me find a trigger point. In fact, it's going to actually not help me find a trigger point because he's using the muscle and he's uh, putting the muscle into, in effect, some sort of spasm. So I'm not going to find a trigger point, but it will help me remember where it is in case you want to remember it. The, the thing with trapezius is it has quite a lot of uh, sort of pain referral patterns. So, um, it, it can be either the whole of these areas or even partially. It can be from the actual trigger points. The, the vertical upper traps along the side of the neck. You can have sort of very specific pain here. And often you'll have pain here a little bit less here than really quite vigorous there. Or even referring into the, the, the jaw. Um, it can... Um, on the left hand sort of side sometimes that you can get from the horizontal traps this sort of pain again around this area here coming out across here so these horizontal traps is almost as the horizontal traps works the right lower part of the trapezius again up here 
very common, into the shoulder and down here. So people are sort of complaining about these pain uh, patterns, may give you an indication as to trapezius. Um, sometimes you will get a pain from the sort of uh, left upper corner attachment of the muscle covering the scapula um, and it will roll around here in a kind of line there or in the, my, in the, the medial sort of fibres of the horizontal fibres of the medial traps again you can get that like, real nasty irritating pain there so these are the kind of referral pains now, if one considers it basically we're talking about a lot of pain all in this area up here and over there so when you treat it and, and especially if you needle it, often a lot of the headaches, tension headaches, pains like this that uh, patients are complaining of, it just goes away and, and you've done it. So then maybe you don't need to bother doing any other areas. Now obviously if you don't then you need to consider going on and uh, needling uh, other muscles accordingly or treating them with your hands. There are two ways of needling the trapezius. Uh, you can do it either with the patient prone or supine. I, I, I personally prefer prone. It's, it's pretty much a, the most comfortable way for the patient as well, more often than not. As I said now, I said this in the, the preamble, but I really like to be able to get hold of the muscle as much as I can. Ordinarily, before I start treating, now I, I know the... Uh, uh, the model, is, uh, his skin is clean and everything, so I've put the gloves on first. But ordinarily I will, I will check the, the, uh, the, uh, the trigger point and then I will make a mark with the, the introducer uh, just where I found the trigger point in this case here and then I'll put my gloves on and then I will needle. The thing with the, tra uh, with the trapezius is it's a nice muscle but one needs to be very, very careful with... Um, uh, the lung. This is one of the, the ones you don't want to be needling in this direction at all because you can actually do some damage to the lungs. And basically the needle is going to go at a, a, a sort of perpendicular to the, to the muscle to go through it and better to use a smaller needle like a, a 30 millimeter needle to, uh, to avoid any problems and it can be thinner or, or thicker but they're usually about 0.25 so basically I will pick up the muscle I will pinch it I will find where I, I just marked off on the trigger point I will place the introducer or the delivery tube you can see the needle here and now I'm just going to tap quick fast tap like that the needle's gone in and then I will just gently take the needle in to the trigger point. Now the thing with the trapezius, I said be careful not to go into the lung. You can hold the muscle or give it a even relax the muscle a little bit. Take the needle in and invariably you'll feel it start to bite or the patient will, will tell you, can you feel that? Do you feel that? Slightly. Yeah. And a little bit more and I'm in there now. Now the model here is very thick set. So that 30 millimeter needle is, is maybe too short. And I could go with a, a 40 millimeter needle, which is um, obviously a bit longer. But when I'm uh, holding the muscle, I need to be careful. I'm not going to go through the skin on the other side. And one stick the needle in my finger. And also it's not particularly nice for the patient. But you can just push the needle in gently in and out. This is the pistoning or pecking. I personally quite like to just leave it like that. Or when I feel, feel the needle biting, twist. And just leave the needle in. Prior to needling, I'd already cleaned the area, as I said, so the uh, for the sake of the video but when I take the needle out I'm just going to put an alcohol swab on the area remove the needle he's actually got a bite on the needle now I can feel you can feel that now I'm sure yep. yeah yeah because it's biting on the needle quite a lot and just hold down a little bit of ischemic pressure on the uh, on the area so there's not going to be any bruising 
just hold it and clean off. So I'd have cleaned, cleaned the, the, the muscle area first after I'd have marked. I will place the, the needle into the delivery tube, tap and come in. And now I'll feel again and ask the patient, are you feeling any discomfort? Is that hurting there at all? No. no? Does that feel easier? Yeah. yeah. There's still I can feel another trigger point there. So maybe now what I will do is introduce the needle back into the introducer. We'll place the needle back into the introducer rather than introduce it. Again, hold the needle, find the trigger point. I know there's a trigger point there. I've already cleaned the area quite nicely. This is one of the first things we do. Find the trigger point. I can feel a nice one there, yeah? Can you feel that hurting going up to your head probably? Slightly, yeah. yeah, okay. Just place the needle, slight tap. Needle has gone in, remove the delivery tube or introducer. Gently take the needle in to the trapezius muscle. You will get, with the smaller needles, more than the bigger needles, quite a lot of bending sometimes because their gauge is a bit thinner. But once you're in, you can probably feel that in your ear now. That's often the one that sort of radiates towards the ear a bit. Oh, well, there we are there. It's now grasping the needle quite a lot. And then just remove and hold a bit of ischemic pressure. And that's the trapezius muscle needled. You may need to do in a couple of places. Remember what we said earlier, you don't want to be doing more than three to five muscles at any one time. And particularly with the trapezius, sometimes you'll have three or four trigger points in just the one muscle. And if you've got that, then probably just doing one or two muscles in any one session will be enough because you've needled a, a few times in, in the one muscle itself. So that's the trapezius. After that, you can put on a little bit of stretching. Um, and uh, uh, teach your model some uh, stretching for the trapezius or if you actually want to first of all remember always to get rid of the the needle in your sharps box my little portable sharps box I keep handy you can sometimes then just do a little bit of massage to ease off and this will be the similar sort of um, treatment you could use for any any of the muscles that you're doing throughout the body.